This is the first video in a series of videos on material areas uh, aimed at revision for the AQA GCSE DT exam. Uh, this first video we'll be having a little look at timbers, looking at how to categorise timbers and understanding the different working properties of a range of timbers and man-made boards. The first thing we need to look at when we look at timbers are being able to classify them into their three separate areas. The first one we'll look at are hardwoods. Now hardwoods come from deciduous trees. Deciduous trees are those trees that lose their leaves in the winter. So in the UK, when you're looking outside, the majority of trees that you'd see uh, would be deciduous trees. The thing that sets these apart is that they grow really slowly. If we took an oak tree, for example, it would take around 300 years to grow to full maturity. If you could imagine then uh, the mass uh, farming of hardwood trees, chopping them down, turning them into products, that could be classed as quite unsustainable. If you cut down a 300 year oak tree to turn it into a product, say a dining room table, that dining room table, uh, you know, is probably not going to last the 300 years it takes for that oak tree to grow again or to regrow. So we need to be really, really careful uh, with how much we use hardwood in manufacturing. The overuse of hardwood for manufacturing will deplete the supply and they won't be able to grow back quick enough um, as we keep using them. Um, the grain of the timber is very close together. We'll have a look at grain on the next slide, but if you imagine uh, a tree trunk that you cut in half uh, and you can see the growth rings, each one of those rings is a year. So as it grows slowly, those rings become much closer together. Uh, the grain being the strength of the wood means that uh, hardwoods, therefore, are very hard and tough um, and dense. A softwood comes from a coniferous tree. Uh, they keep their leaves during the winter, uh, and generally they're not leaves, they're spines or needles. If you can imagine a Christmas tree uh, is a good example of a softwood. Softwood trees grow really quickly. Um, a pine tree, for example, may take 30 years to grow to maturity rather than the 300 years an oak tree would. Because they grow so quickly, we could class their extensive use for manufacturing as much more sustainable. If you turned a pine tree into some furniture, that might be ready to throw away in 50 years or 30 years. And in that time, hopefully, uh, the tree will have grown back. Obviously, this uh, only works if the trees are being f uh, used in a sustainable forest, they're being replanted after they've been used, etc. But the quick growing nature of a softwood tree uh, would make them more sustainable for mass use than hardwoods. And as I said before, in terms of the grain, because softwood trees grow much quicker, their growth rings, which is the grain, are much further apart. That would make them much less dense, uh, much easier to work with, much softer and easier to cut. Hence why we maybe use softwood for a much more large scale manufacturing. The third classification of wood that we need to think about are man-made woods. Uh, Man-made woods can be made in a variety of ways. The image I have on the slide is of plywood. Plywood, of course, is layers of timber glued together um, with their grain at 90 degrees from each other. Things like MDF or chipboard are made from shavings and pieces of timber um, put together with glue resin and then compressed together with pressure and heat to form into boards. So man-made woods are woods made in factories uh, for specific uses and can be made to a range of dimensions. If we go through each of these classifications in order now, so now we'll have a little look at timber grain, just what I was explaining earlier. We can see the image on the left is the cross section of a tree trunk and you can clearly see the growth rings. Uh, now, what I was saying before, uh, on a hardwood that grows slowly, these growth rings will be much closer together because each of them represents a year's worth of growth. Uh, so each, uh, each of these rings will be much closer together on a hardwood tree. Uh, and if we transfer that over to the image on the right, you can see that those growth rings 
are the grain of the wood when it's cut vertically. The closer together the grain, generally the harder, stronger, harder to work with and more dense the timber would be. In a pine tree, which is a softwood tree, the grain is much wider apart, much further apart, meaning it's lighter, less dense, easier to work with. On the end grain, we can think about the uh, the pores of the timber. Um, now, with different timbers uh, each have a different level of porosity, um, and that contributes to the finish and the smooth texture of timber. If we compare oak and beech, we'll have a look at in a moment. Um, oak is uh, has much bigger pores and therefore it can be rougher and takes a lot more smoothing and sanding down to achieve a smooth finish, whereas beech are much more closed grain texture, meaning its pores are much smaller. Uh, therefore, when you sand it, you don't have to sand it as much to get a really smooth finish. For our GCSE, we need to know these three different types of um, timber classifications, and we need to know these timbers in each group. Uh, so for hardwood, we need to know ash, oak, beech, mahogany, and balsa. For manufactured woods, MDF, chipboard, and plywood. And for softwoods, pine, larch, and spruce. Now, in this video, I'm not going to go through all of these timbers. We'll just take a few from each um, different classification. Uh, this is an example of oak. Oak is a hardwood uh, usually used to make large-scale furniture, expensive, bespoke carpentry. Uh, oak is a really hard and a really tough piece of timber, so it resists scratching, indentation, and it resists cracking and fracturing. Uh, we talked about uh, oak taking a long time to grow, therefore its grain is very close together, making it a very high density piece of timber. Oak is commonly used for really high quality pieces of furniture because of its hard wearing and durable mechanical properties. Finishes really well with a range of um, wax stain, varnish, dye. The disadvantage to oak, uh, similar to a lot of hardwoods, is that it grows really slowly, which increases its price and reduces its availability. Also meaning it's uh, less sustainable for use. Beech is another example of hardwood. Um, the big difference here with beech and oak is that we talked about it having a closed grain texture. Closed grain texture means uh, on the end grain of the timber, the pores are much smaller and closer together. This means that it is less prone to splinters and cracking. Um, it finishes much better, requires less sanding to achieve a really smooth finish. Because it achieves a really smooth finish, it um, because it achieves a really smooth finish, it less likely to have splinters, and that's why it's used for children's toys, pianos, furniture, things that come into contact with human skin. The negative of beach, however, is it has a much lower durability uh, because of this closed grain texture. It also is subject to much more movement from water than other hardwoods. So you have to be really careful when it's been seasoned to ensure it doesn't be it doesn't go uh, cupped or warped. If we have a look now at our softwoods, uh, the best example for us to look at is pine. Um, pine uh, forests uh, inhabit much of the northern hemisphere, uh, used a lot in Scandinavia for saunas, furniture, um, in the 1980s and 90s, uh, pine furniture sets for bedrooms, very, very popular. Uh, still popular now because of its lower cost than hardwoods. Uh, the big difference then with softwoods, uh, as we've said, is that it's much easier to work because the grain is more spread out. So it's easier to cut. It's softer and it's, it's less hard and less tough. Also means it's much more lightweight. Uh, which is obviously easier to move around, to ship, transport, to cut, and also to assemble or move around in your house. Pine is used commonly for constructional woodwork, floorboards, decking, uh, trusses in houses, but also toys and furniture. People really like pine because of the big grain. Um, you get a really nice 
uh, pretty grain pattern. You can also see in the image on the bottom right, you get quite a lot of these knot areas. Uh, those knots are formed uh, where branches sprout off the tree trunk. Because it grows much more quickly than hardwoods, we can class it as much more sustainable because it's more readily available. In the time it takes for the piece of furniture or the product to reach its end of usable life, hopefully the tree will be grown again in a sustainable forest. If we have a look at our manufactured woods, one of the most common is MDF, which means medium density fiberboard. Um, MDF is manufactured with effectively sawdust that is added with resin, uh, resin and glue put into a former in a mold and pressure and heat is applied to form it into these boards. Because there is no grain to MDF, uh, it is structurally stable in all directions because uh, there's no grain to cause warping through water damage, but the lack of grain means it is not a very strong wood. Uh, it can be snapped easily and broken uh, and cracked. It also will break down really easily if water uh, is applied. So without a waterproof finish or a veneer, MDF will be destroyed by water. It will just dissolve and disintegrate. It does give a really, really smooth finish to apply either paint or veneer. Uh, I wouldn't be applying wax or varnish to MDF. Like I said in a previous video, it's pointless because there's no grain to, to bring out. MDF is most commonly used in flat pack furniture. Things that you buy from IKEA uh, or other bits of flat pack furniture are often made with MDF, maybe with a veneer applied, uh, drawer bottoms, kitchen units, etc. And that's because they can boards of MDF can be manufactured into uh, a range of different sizes. The common stock size is two four four zero by one two two zero in millimeters. But can be manufactured in a range of size, also very easily machined, CNC routed, etc., to provide um, holes for fittings and screws, etc. Our other manufactured wood is plywood. Plywood is much stronger than MDF, and that's because it's made from real layers of timber. Uh, and these layers of timber are layered together, and each layer arranges the grain 90 degrees to the other. So if you can see on the bottom right picture, the grain alternates at 90 degrees. This gives it structural stability in all directions. And also the addition of lots of layers plus adhesive and glue makes plywood a very, very strong uh, material. Um, great tensile and compressive strength. Um, the layers of plywood can also be glue laminators. They can be steam bent. Uh, steam bent and then glue laminated together into curved forms or structures. Um, you might see now modern building modern buildings using large glue laminated timber beams uh, for both aesthetic and sustainability aspects. You know, making um, buildings out of timber is obviously much more sustainable than concrete, but also the aesthetics of a glue laminated plywood timber beam is really high. The uses for it, like I said, are in construction, but also in furniture, wardrobes, drawers. Um, aesthetically, I think plywood provides a really nice uh, finish when you can see the layered end grain if varnish is applied. Uh, plywood are very common manufacturing material. So that's the video on different timber classifications. We remember we have talked through Hardwoods, which come from deciduous trees, softwood from coniferous trees, and we looked at a range of manufactured boards. We've thought about the sustainability aspects of each classification of timber. We've